Today, I want to share some data science ideas for another local company, Bright House Financial. Bright House Financial is a spinoff from MetLife. They sell annuity and life insurance policies nationally. Now, here's the interesting thing about them. Their annuity business has done quite well. First of all, wait a second, insurance company, how do they make money? We pay premiums, they invest them, they get the difference. They need equity markets to be doing, to be doing well to make money. Equity markets have been crazy. Inflation is crazy. There's a lot going on. So there's pressure on Bright House. And as part of their two core product lines, annuities and life insurance, annuities have still been performing well recently, but life insurance has been flat. So they have a big push in 2023 to grow life insurance. And that means they're going to launch or they're manifesting that with a new product launch. So what cool data science, deep learning, machine learning things can we do to support that? Let me walk through some ideas. And before I get into the actual specific use cases, it would be useful. I like Bill Schmarzo's framework here to look at entities and the key decisions those entities need to make to support this initiative. And for a national or a life insurance or insurance carrier, they principally work through brokerages or independent marketing organizations and independent agents. And often the agent works through the IMO back to the carrier. So what does this mean? Well, for example, these IMOs are really focused on lead gen. So are the agents too. But the agents themselves are making recommendations to their customers, their clients, about what policies to buy. So as a homeowner, one, or excuse me, as someone with a term life policy, one of the key decisions or key drivers of buying that policy was purchasing a home. And one of the key drivers of the amount was simply the mortgage, thinking, okay, well, if I plot, then I've got to make sure I cover principal and interest. So my family's not out on the street, right? That's only one cost for those who own homes. That's only one cost of the home. So basically my idea here would be, can we look at some interesting life? Can we build a model around maintenance lifetime cost as an input, a key input for both the, the, you know, the term life, the insurance customer, as well as the agents and the IMOs to say, look, we can, if we can better forecast or better estimate the actual cost of owning your home, we could give you a, we could help you better understand how much coverage you actually need. In certain locales, the principal and interest may be so significant that it outweighs any maintenance costs. In other areas of the country, it might be the reverse. In where I live in Winston-Salem, and in particularly in my old neighborhood, not to make the personal here the whole story, but we have, it's a wonderful old neighborhood. We have beautiful tall trees. That means something, a cost I didn't anticipate, tree removal. It varies between $500 to $5,000 per tree. Getting a truck out, if the truck can fit, there are lots of factors. The really good tree companies are quite booked up. If the tree climbers already have their motorcycle, new truck, and jet ski, then they don't want to climb. A million and one things can go into this. As an individual homeowner, I just call around until I can get somebody. But at a trend level, cohort level, there's a lot of interesting analytics one could gather to figure out basically like at a basic level, like, what are the trends for tree removal costs as just one of many home, you know, one of many core key home, home maintenance costs. What are the trends around the price, you know, the price of tree removal, the age of trees, et cetera, the cost they have in terms of, of falling on your home. Lots of things I'd like to know. Aggregate level data here would be really interesting, not terribly difficult to gather. That could be extended into the supply side of the equation. Like looking, if you started gathering job leads, what are the average pay rates? Are those going up or down for the people who actually work at these companies? How many open positions would we'll give you some semblance of demand and the opportunity out there? It would sort of at least help us forecast a little bit like, hey, given the age of these neighborhoods, given the current supply of, of vendors or service providers, costs are looking like they're going to go up of these trends. And then finally, you know, the image analysis and video analysis would be tremendous here to provide actual recommendations based on my home. So as an example, for several years now, L'Oreal has had a little web application and embedded in one of their sites where I can upload a selfie and it will recommend makeup products to me. Like, hey, go figure, you need a moisturizer, right? Why can't I do the exact same thing at brighthousefinancialpro.com, one of their web properties where they have listicle style blogs, they have some basic tools, they have a little bit of interactivity, but something where I can provide images of or give access to my Instagram feed. Here's the family photo, here's the home. And you can start to give me guidance around the trees you have, your roof maintenance, and how all of this works together. A lot of really interesting baseline insights that could be used on the lead gen side to provide better recommendations, let alone how this might actually manifest in terms of you know, better connection with the end customer, additional products, et cetera. But starting with these initial insights and then working our way using advanced analytic techniques, like especially this image and video analysis, send out a drone or something like that, to drive just right back to like, what do you actually need? Really excited.